I'll tell you this, anybody who's never been here, I'll tell you this one thing. If you come here one time, you will come back every year for the rest of your life. It's kind of like a family reunion, only it's a reunion of uh, friends. And it's just a, it's a reunion of reunions. <laughs> It's uh, four days in September. It's just kind of uh, this little city here, Winfield, must have about a thousand people in it. They've got this great campgrounds out here by the river and been getting, what is this, the 30th annual? 29th, and will there be like 13 or 14,000 people here? There are so many musicians, and you don't have to go on the main stages or any of the big stages to see some just totally super talent. The best, best talent that can be found just walking around the campground. I saw miles and miles of Texas, the stars up in the sky. I saw miles and miles of Texas, live until I die. Bob Redford uh, started the idea up back about 71. And I think when it first started, a lot of people, a lot of townsfolk down there kind of looked on it, uh, you know, with a little bit of suspicion because, you know, festivals had it at, you know, in the 70s, they had a certain, certain connotation. Doc Watson, um, Bill Monroe, you know, just about anybody who's, who's made a name for themselves in bluegrass has played there. So many of uh, the festivals and they have unbelievable talent in a lot of these others, but they don't have the campground music. And um, most of it is just bring your lawn chair and watch the stages. Um, here, I, uh, I can't remember the last time I went to a stage. So <laughs> even though they have a great talent here, but it's, it's just too much fun to hang out in camp and uh, see what happens. <laughs> Let's take it all compelling now together now. I said I'm ready. I'm ready as anybody can be. I said I'm ready. I'm ready as anybody can be. I said I'm ready for you. I hope you're ready for me. Yeah, take it out there. I like our camp a whole lot. I never leave our camp to go anywhere because we have such a good group of people in here. And they're, we have a wide range of friends from all over the country, and they always make a point to come in and play with us. So you don't want to leave our camp because if you leave our camp, you're going to miss out. What are they going to miss out on? They won't get to be down to the real nitty gritty. <laughs> You know, one of the things that uh, about this festival is it is a national flat picking championship. So there's people that come here to uh, compete and win a guitar, a really nice guitar. You know, they have some other championships. So you have, you know, a lot of uh, contestants that spend a lot of time in the fairgrounds or just playing, you know, practicing and just having a good time. People name their camps, decorate them, you know, go all out. It's like a microcosm in itself. It's its own little world. I mean, there's people go to elaborate lengths, build their campsite up, have all the all their creature comforts. A lot of people like me have been here since last Friday, so we're here for 10 days. ago on a windfield just like this it was hot and we had an inflatable wading pool that we had inside the screen tent just to cool off and got up the next morning and two flamingos had come to the pool and we let them stay and the next night there were watermelons in the wading pool but they obviously were flamingo eggs because we left them there for the duration of the festival and the next year a whole flock of them appeared and we're thinking this is like a migratory flyway for them so um, 
we put out the pond every year and they return. <laughs> I kind of like the swallows. <laughs> Blue Bayou, we've been down here for several years, and uh, we have a group of people, a large group of people, that all come and camp together. You can smoke and play at the same time. We have a little pond at the base where the tree is. There's the catfish. Holy mackerel. The kitchen's a big thing. You know, everybody hangs out in the kitchen just like at home. We actually made a pan of biscuits. They're called <laughs> yeah, cathead they're biscuits. Good. Coming back every year, it's just, it's a reunion, you know? I've, uh, <laughs> People down here we camped with forever. It's it's just a big family reunion for us. So the music is really good. You, you just don't really hear any bad music, and it's nice to fall asleep to that. Um, but you can walk around and, and uh, see beginner camps and, and, and things like that. And that's, that's the great thing about the music. It's accessible to everyone. Seventy percent of the people are players on some level. And that's the good thing about Winfield, because you can play at any level and get so much out of it. There's a certain amount of adrenaline that's going on, you know, because you're you're playing and you're trying to keep up with these guys, and and then you know they'll look at you and okay, it's your time to turn to solo, and you know you go, don't know what the heck's going, you know, you're going to do until you just start pounding on it and hope something melodic comes out. About six months after I started playing, I met Richard Krausen, who had just moved to Wichita and was putting a bluegrass band together and he asked me to play with them and, and these guys, they, all the other guys were a lot more experienced than I, than I was. Okay, we'd get together and rehearse and they'd say, oh, that sounds great, okay, and they'd give me a tape of somebody and say, go home and listen to this and see what you think of this guy. They wouldn't go say, go, you know, you suck learn how to play like this guy does, you know, which is probably what they were thinking, you know. Just the experience to go around and learn from so many just dynamite musicians around here. I don't consider myself particularly good, but Winfield has made me a lot better. I love coffee, I love tea, I love the java jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the jiving in me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, yeah. I love Java, sweet and hot. Oops, Mr. Moto, I'm a coffee pot. Pass me the pot and I'll pour me a shot. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. But uh, uniquely enough, people have accepted it, have accepted me as a ukulele player too. And uh, though I do play guitar, you know, so I can uh, break into that if they get uh, weary of the ukulele. But as long as I don't uh, try to make a big show out of it, the ukulele seems to go okay. <laughs> I love the java jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the jive and me. A cup, 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 a cup. Java Jive. <laughs> and Karen was uh, a guest with the Home Rangers. 
And she didn't really have a whole lot of cowboy tunes that she did, and so uh, I just came up with the idea of writing this tune that she could perform there about our daughter, Haley. She used to have this purple tutu with this purple netting, and I do have pictures of that where she just lived in that thing. Um, I have pictures of her out in the rain with an umbrella with that on, and then she had her pink cowboy boots, and she'd put those on, and she had a little wooden um, rocking horse, and she just would just go to town on that. when it all comes together and you're hitting the right note and you kind of have a sixth sense about how to spread that chord and make it even bigger, um, it's kind of like when you're sailing and you get everything just right and then the wind hits the sails and you just take off. She's singing a song about a rootin' tootin' ballerina We have that one little thread running between all the camps of the music and um, Around that, all these reunions have, uh, have started developing. We have some outrageous jams. One of the things I love about our campsite is we're not just bluegrass, you know, we're not just uh, cowboy music or, or blues or western swing, we're everything. You know, we <laughs> sometimes in the same song. Born to be <laughs> It's called the nose flute. Some people call it the snoot flute. I like nose flute because, I don't know, I think snoot flute is kind of demeaning. You have to keep your mouth open and you just only blow out your nose. I can play a note. Wait. <laughs> See how my, my nostrils kind of flare out, kind of like Louis Armstrong. You can get dizzy from playing the <laughs> flute. You, I mean, it's it's a hazard, actually. Dirty Bob suggested that I should start wearing a helmet, but I don't know if I'm really into that. <laughs> Again, let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. Born to play nose flute. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Woo! You all remember this moment. You were here, man. You were here when it all began. There's usually at least one Irish band. There's swing music. There's uh, Western music. There's um, you will hear jazz. There was a guy up playing a medley of Beatles tunes uh, just a while ago. Um, it's it's pretty diverse. So many people start coming here in their 30s, and then they just keep coming. And now all of a sudden, I'm 50, and I've been coming here for 12 or 13 years, and I see this whole new generation of kids, like these kids right over here with an electric guitar, and they're playing Nirvana. But they're figuring out how to all sit down together and do this for fun. And I think that's great to think that probably 35 years from now, when I'm 85, I could come here like my dad did last year and would sit out here and play with us till 3 or 4 in the morning. And this is definitely our chance once a year to get together and be right down here kind of isolated from our phones and our faxes and our computers and our cars. And we're just really committed to being here together and end up just playing.
thinking, how many wives would harmonize with their husbands on a song? Wow. <laughs> You're the best. You're the greatest. One of the guys was in our camp, said he, he went downtown today for some reason, and somebody said, get back to the hospital to him, you know, because of his wristband. And in a sense, it is a hospital. I mean, it's, this is a place, it's a therapy, you know, it's kind of like group therapy happens here, you know. <laughs> There's our mental health to think about, and everybody needs to have something to do to uh, relax from their job and unwind, and yeah, we do. Rhythms will only be 4-4, four, four, with an occasional waltz. Am I understood? Well, he's the bass player here because there is no other, and that's the kind of team player Tom is. <laughs> he, he brought a bass because we didn't have one, so we went and bought one and brought it with him. See, I'm kind of like a Swiss Army knife. I can do a little bit of everything, but I, do, I don't do anything very well. So I play a little guitar, a little mandolin, a little upright bass, a lot of singing. And, and that's good because uh, we've got some ex exceedingly fine musicians in this camp and some people that are really world-class players. And then they attract these other people to come in and play with us. Tell those untold stories, let the healing start. got the National Flat Picking Contest, and it really is considered, I mean, this is the, this is the contest. If you win Winfield uh, for an acoustic musician, it, I mean, it's, it can be a stepping stone to, to a lot bigger things. I do want to put together just a couple days ago so it's not perfected. Let's see, I just wrote this. Let's see how it goes here. All of the people in our camp come from such diverse backgrounds. We have teachers, construction workers, contractors, um, uh, multi-million dollar brokers, uh, you name it, we've got it. Um, it's such a diverse group, but the main thread running through it all is the love of music. Rick and his son are great fiddlers, and it's been neat to watch them over the years. All I ever see of them is pretty much Winfield, at Winfield. And, uh, I've watched uh, Rick's son really progress into a real, real good fiddler from one year to the next. You can see the progress. We actually camp in the Walnut Grove. Across the other side of the uh, fairgrounds is the pecan grove. And there's nothing like playing music and all of a sudden have a pecan hit you on the head. Yeah, the rad camp is something else. Those guys are, they have too much fun down there. They string up that big parachute every year over, over the camp. And Greg killed a rat one time, um, the story goes, in his, uh, in his garage. And, uh, apparently decided it would be a good idea to uh, stuff it and have it taxidermied or whatever you call that process. <laughs> so it was, and uh, it became the rat that is uh, dressed up by, by uh, Greg's wife, Gail, and uh, is kind of the award that's given every year. I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure, I don't know if anybody is quite sure how they determine who gets the award from one year to the next, but. Someone takes possession of the rat for the year and uh, 
brings it back the next year and it goes to someone else for, for some, some reason that no one can quite fathom. And they have the buttons, they make the buttons, Greg makes the buttons up and um, they had some, some, a couple of the original buttons were actual, uh, actually made out of rat fur. It was just a, uh, this mysterious looking round object with, with fur on it, <laughs> which people proudly wore on their, uh, on their shirts. Well, every year you sign up in the book at the rat camp, sign your name in there, and the next year your name will be worked into the puzzle. And so everybody loves to go there and, and look at this huge thing and try to find their name. And, you know, it's, it keeps some people occupied, that, and that's a good thing, I guess. Stage 5 started out as a campsite, because um, I used to camp over there with uh, Bill Allen. He just started out with a black, an old black pickup truck with a flatbed, and uh, just put some microphones up there, and maybe had a tie-dye backdrop to it. And they put a piece of paper on a tree, and you could go with times, you know, wrote, or just wrote numbers, and you could go over and put, write your name down, and then play on stage. and. Uh, it was pretty crude, you know, at the time. But and I've probably been playing there for almost every festival you know, for a long time. And then it's gotten um, legitimized here and there. Mostly, I think it was about five years ago, the festival actually sanctioned it and uh, um, gave it its own black and yellow sign that says Stage Five and gave it its little insignia. And um, now they actually print a schedule for it. Some of the main stage acts will play there, and I think that, um, Beppe Gambetta was a, he had some friends down there, and he would just love to go down there, and he'd go down there and play like at one in the morning, and just, you know, just get everything revved up. Hey guys, you're about to go up on stage next. Wow, what do you think, what are you feeling? Well, I wish I used my scales a lot more when I was about 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've seated the audience with enough family members. It should go over pretty well. on their tails. Oh, it's just so exciting. This is my annual sabbatical. It's, <laughs> it's a chance to uh, leave all my responsibilities behind, come here and just enjoy myself. It's sort of my opportunity to face the music. Your dad is real. Little jams will break out underneath someone's awning in front of their RV, you know, and uh, maybe just three or four people want to quietly play some Western swing for a while, and they'll sit and do that. and. Um, or maybe Tom Warburton or <laughs> will get together a big old Mustang Sally. I think I'm going to slow your Mustang down. <laughs> Look at all the 
lined up there. A bunch of little hot rods is what they are. Slow your Mustang down. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell you now. All I got to do is a ride around Sally Singing. Ride, Sally, ride. Tell me gently. All I got to do is a ride around Sally Singing. Ride, Sally, ride. All I want to do is a ride around with Sally Singing. Oh! 